Hi. A few days ago, I wrote uh, this uh, post on uh, network booting with uh, IPX and DHCP proxy. And in this video, I am going to explain a little bit more about uh, about uh, all the steps and explain the configuration and uh, what and why. Okay. So first of all. Uh, why DHCP proxy? And the reason is that uh, usually when you want to do network booting, you need to configure your DHCP server. Because when the client boots up, it uh, asks the DHCP server to provide it with the IP. And also, for example, the client can request um, a boot firmware, a boot file, and uh, many things. And in, in, in instances where we can't configure the DHCP server for various reasons, we will need to use DHCP proxy. Um, okay, so uh, we will go over this, but before that, let's have a little bit of an example. Uh, I have a traffic uh, capture here, so just to will understand what's going on. I think it's very a good software to, to debug uh, setting up uh, things like that so we will have it in uh, the background uh, okay so what we will do here we have a VM this uh, VM is a bridge to host to my host network it means uh, uh, the network sees this VM is just another physical machine and we configured uh, this VM to boot from uh, from network uh, network card. So let's start it. Let's see how uh, what happens. Start PC over IPv4. Okay, and we got uh, the grab menu. Uh, what I will do, uh, once I click, uh, actually th this menu is, uh, uh, we will going to configure it. Meanwhile, it will take some time, so I will click enter, enter, and uh, it will download the ISO from Ubuntu web servers and begin installation. So, I will click enter, and while it's downloading the, the ISO image, let's go over the post and explain. Okay, so first thing you need to do is to install a DNS mask. This uh, piece of software uh, um, is uh, it basically it it's gives you several things: TFTP server, uh, DNS server. But we will not be using it, but it also can give you DNS server. It can give you DH, DHCP server, and it can run a, a DHCP proxy mode. Okay, so. And TFTP server. I'm not sure if I already said it. We will need all of them. Uh, second step, I ask you here to download IPX uh, software, firmware, and uh, you, you can uh, you can compile it yourself, or you can uh, download uh, pre-compiled uh, uh, binaries. From this step, what you will need, you will need only one file: IPX EFI. Next step, what you, uh, you, you will need to do, you will need to download uh, Ubuntu Live uh, uh, ISO image. Uh, I think Ubuntu releases, releases. It's very important that it will be a um, live version. For example, let's check it here. Live. So everything that you have uh, live with it, it's good. For example this so you will need to download it and from there uh, you need to retrieve two files casper initrd and casper vm linux this is the kernel uh, file and this is the uh, initial uh, file system uh, so you will need two of these files Next step, what we want to do, we want to create a, a grab uh, configuration. If you, if you will uh, notice when I booted the, the VM uh, first time, uh, we saw here a grab menu. 
and the grab menu is configured here. Here, here I have an example of one entry in the menu. Uh, install Ubuntu, pull the ISO from my web. It is the, the name of the, of the menu entry. And what I have here, I have the, to, uh, the Linux kernel and the ISO, ISO image that I, that I download from, the, uh, from Ubuntu web servers and the initial file system. Uh, uh, this, uh, this path is relative to your TFTP server. So for example, in my case, uh, my TFTP server is configured under this folder. So these two files are here, as you can see, exactly like, uh, like, uh, like here. So, okay, so we now understand that we uh, configured, how to configure the menu. Ba basically uh, at this point, uh, your TFTP uh, boot a root uh, folder should look like this. Uh, uh, you have the initRD, VM Linux, uh, grab config, IPXC, and I forgot that you also need uh, you, you also need this file. Yeah, you can also retrieve it from the ISO image. And we can actually, if if you will just search this, you you won't, it will. Uh, first entry in Google search, and you will find it. Okay, so uh, at this point, um, we we are ready to configure our uh, DNS mask, and here is the the configuration of the DNS mask. So. Uh, 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 notice here, enable TFTP server and configure location. So what we, what I uh, told DNS mask, listen, here is the root folder of the uh, TFTP server. If we go to the terminal here, TFTP, as you can see, exactly like, like we have here. Okay, so we done with that. Uh, disable the, actually all this is pretty self-explanatory. We don't want to use DNS server. Uh, this line configures on which uh, network uh, your proxy is, uh, uh, on, uh, your proxy is uh, legit. Okay, so my, net, uh, my network is uh, this, with this uh, uh, net mask. Uh, and that's it basically. Uh, and you can see here in proximal. Uh, this line you actually uh, most likely you can ignore it. It's for uh, for uh, legacy problematic clients. You can ignore it most likely. Uh, next uh, next entry here is uh, on which interface the DNS mask will uh, listen. In my case, I have a, a obvious bridge that is configured uh, for the virtual uh, machine. But in your case, it's probably will be something like uh, uh, Ethernet zero, or uh, if you will go here, uh, you, you, you see I have here the, uh, the bridge with the IP, but you might have something else. You, you might not have this bridge because you did not configure bridge. So you need to use like uh, physical interfaces instead. Okay, so uh, these three uh, configurations are like the most tricky ones. Um, and I will try to explain it uh, now. Okay, so what, we, what uh, happens is that the first time uh, in the, the client boots, we want to boot it with the, the IPXC EFI. And the second time it boots, we want to, uh, uh, to boot with the grub uh, EFI. And we, if, we di if we did not have these two, uh, 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 these two configurations, uh, sorry, these two, what would happen is that you will just load the grub, uh, uh, the grub, 
but uh, to use uh, to uh, to use a grub, you need to compile it with uh, to uh, like build it together with the grub menu, and I don't like this uh, this way of doing it. I, I just want to to take to take this clean grub uh, and configure the grub menu with the grub uh, CFG. So what, what happens here, first I load the IPXF firmware and this IPXF firmware will know to load this grub uh, file together with the configuration. And what I wanted to do here, I wanted I, I wanted to avoid a loop that each time it loads, uh, the client loads, it. Uh, I don't want it to load the IPXF firmware again and again. So what I do, uh, I configure this. And this means if uh, DHCP match set, if, if you recognize this uh, DHCP options, please mark this cl client is IPXE EFI and if and if you marked it, it uh, what you win, uh, what you want to do you want to uh, you see here DHCP boot if the tag is IPXE OK please run uh, grabnet uh, EFI otherwise it will just run uh, the IPXE EFI so maybe it's better to show it in the on Wireshark. So by the way, we can see here. Uh, here you can see the initial uh, my uh, original DHCP server. There is no uh, boot file name given. No, no uh, boot file given by the original DHCP proxy, uh, DHCP server, but uh, here we have my DHCP proxy and the proxy provides uh, uh, IPX EFI according to this configuration. So what happens first boot will happen with this file. And because of, uh, of this line, this of this of these lines the second the second uh, boot we hopefully have this new DHCP options because the IPX firmware uh, it has a little bit different uh, fingerprint of for for the client um, actually we can maybe we can uh, see here discover Okay, as here you can see, uh, it has uh, this option and we didn't have this option before. If we will look here, we didn't have this option. So this, how we recognize that the second boot was done with the IPX firmware. Okay, uh, and that's it basically. Uh, uh, I think we explained this configuration here. Uh, also, don't forget after you configure everything, you need to restart DNS mask. And here you can see. Uh, example of the menu as well and here we can just it loaded I can just start installing it like like you would do um, in the regular uh, uh, USB boot uh, disk on key uh, basically it works I, I think that's it if you will have uh, any questions, you can uh, ping me on by mail or I don't know LinkedIn, whatever, and I will try to clarify uh, uh, clarify all questions. 
I, I, I will add to this post link to the to this video and we'll upload it to YouTube. Uh, so you can uh, actually comment there uh, and ask questions if you have any. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.